everyone, and welcome to the show. We're so glad you're with us today. Well, in a world full of noise and distractions, how can we identify the voice of God? Many of us are wondering, are there different ways in which God communicates? That's right. We heard from Eliana on YouTube, and she asked, does God actually answer you with his voice? Sometimes I ask him something and I hear an answer in my mind and I wonder if it's my voice or God answering me. You know, Ashley, a lot of people wonder this. Is this me kind of having my own yeah. thoughts or am I really hearing from the Lord here? Yeah, and I would say, you know, God uses our own conscience. And so the conscience being the voice that we hear, our own thoughts, God uses that. I think it's a tool that he uses to absolutely speak to us because I completely understand where you're coming from. Sometimes you will, you know, maybe get confirmation or or hear the voice of God through others. You know, a lot of times he uses others to speak into your life and you're sure. like, oh, okay, yes, that, you know, it's confirmation mm -hmm. of what you might have already been feeling. I know that's happened a lot of times in my life. Um, but, you know, sometimes sometimes you can hear the audible voice of God. Mm -hmm. Others have, have heard that. I personally don't know if I ever have, but so many times I've felt it in my heart go, and yeah. maybe that's a better mm -hmm. explanation of what I mean by conscience. Sometimes when we're praying for people here, like we, we yeah. it's not a, I don't yeah. hear a voice in my ear, but exactly. I feel it in my spirit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Exactly. No, no, no. That's, that's, Great. That's it's a way better way of explaining it. We, you feel it in your spirit, and it because it's the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You know, God is inside of you, so therefore He's going to use that conscience, that innermost being, yeah. feeling in your heart, to speak to you. And a lot of times, that feeling is what you've already learned from the Holy Spirit, the yeah. wisdom you've already obtained. If you've spent time in the Word of God, of course, anytime you feel like maybe you're hearing from God, am I not hearing from God? Of course, mm -hmm. as you know, Ashley, you've said this often. We need to line it up with Scripture. Yes. Um, how? Mm -hmm. What's the next step? If you feel like you've heard something from the Lord and you're trying to discern, is this me just having my own thoughts or is this of God? I think a good way to determine that is what's the next step as a result? Mm. I, when I have this word or this thought, what's my next action step and will it glorify the Lord? Mm -hmm. Then you certainly know it's of God. Or yeah. is it fleshly? Mm -hmm. now, I, I know recently I was there, was there was a material thing I wanted to obtain, mm -hmm. wanted to buy something <laughs> and... Uh, I realized because I was in the Word in those days, it was mm -hmm. talking about don't store up things, treasures on earth, store up things in heaven. I just knew that this was a fleshly thing. Okay. It wasn't something yeah. I needed. And my mm -hmm. point is that's kind of what you talked about with the conscience. I'd spent enough yeah. time in the Word to understand what's priority and what's not. Yeah. timing of things. And so we can know based on experiences. Well, also real quick, there's no yeah. condemnation for those in Christ. So if you're hearing mm -hmm. self-hatred, I'm awful, I'm a terrible person, nobody yeah. loves me, nobody likes me, all those types of things, that is not of God. Yeah. That is the enemy of our soul. And personally in my own life, um, I have always prayed, Lord, let your peace guide me because God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of turmoil and distress. He's the God and the author of peace and joy and love. So if you're trying to make a decision or something's going on, you're not sure what to do, let the peace of God be the umpire in your life. Let the peace of God guide you. Is this bringing me peace? If it is, okay, that could be a great indicator that this is a yes or this is the Lord's in it. But if it's not, you know, maybe pray about it some more, get some wise counsel in your life. That's personally, mm -hmm. that's huge for me. If I'm not at peace about something, that means that um, either it's a it's a no, it's a maybe, or it's a, hey, you need to yeah. spend some more time with the Lord. So. I hear you on peace. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree 100%. With that, sometimes that peace will make us uncomfortable because God's asking us to step out in something we may not want to do, right? Mm. Maybe something that scares us. We could have peace. It's the right decision. Yeah. It's still scary. Absolutely. Or, yes. boy, the Lord wants me to reach out in service and love to this person that's hurt me. Mm -hmm. I have peace that this is what he wants. Sometimes it doesn't mean we'll want to do it. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. We get called out of our comfort yeah. zone. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we get called into things we may not want to do. Mm -hmm. But love never fails. If it glorifies the kingdom, we know it's of the Lord yeah. for sure. Amen. Well, I hope that helped you. And if you guys would like to ask us a question or give us a topic to talk about on the show like we just did, make sure you visit our social media pages and look for our posts on different platforms such as Facebook and Instagram at 700 Club Interactive. You can also visit our YouTube page for extended interviews and stories and clips like this to share with your friends and family. Years of alcoholism and insecurity left this woman wanting to take her own life. And as tears dripped onto her suicide note, God stepped in. Watch how this woman's life was completely transformed. My acceptance and my identity had turned into 
what other people thought of me. It was like striving for perfectionism. So when I was five years old, uh, we went to a church regularly. I remember being so excited and wanting to tell the whole world about Jesus. I began to experience insecurity in school, constantly comparing my body to other girls, comparing myself to my older sister. They seemed to have it put together in a nice box. I just wanted to be like them. In eighth grade, I got a virus of some sort and lost some weight. And I started really caring and putting nice clothes on and started getting attention. I was like, oh, as long as I stay thin and look the part on the outside, then I'm gonna be accepted and fit in. Started eating in front of people, and then I would go in the bathroom and make myself throw up. My identity had turned into how I presented myself on the outside, putting on a mask every day. I was being introduced to a little bit of the party scene. I was getting introduced to drinking. When I drank, it like made me feel confident. My boyfriend's parents were out of town and we were drinking. I got really drunk. I did not resist. I really don't remember much about that night, but I remember laying on the floor feeling so dirty. It just kept going, and I felt so used. I think I felt like God was so mad at me. I felt like he was so disappointed. Really, I should have just run to him. But instead, I ran to everything else. I decided I'm just going to go far away to college. I realized that I was just a number out of thousands and thousands of people. I didn't know who I was anymore. I was a functioning alcoholic for the most part. Not think twice about getting in the car with a good buzz going. I was driving on the interstate. Remember seeing cones that were veering into one lane. I had looked down and was fiddling with my radio. And when I looked back up, I saw them and I jerked my wheel. My car flipped multiple times on the interstate. They found me in the car upside down, beer cans all over the interstate. And the next thing I know, I'm waking up in the hospital, scared and at the same time thinking when I was gonna get my next drink. My parents tried to help me, they would send me to AA meetings and the whole process started of in and out of rehab. Literally, I would try to quit and I would stay good for a week or two or a month and then it would just repeat, repeat, repeat. At 23, I remember being home by myself and it was Christmas time and I had burned every bridge. And I remember getting down on my knees at the coffee table and I was beginning to write a suicide note just explaining to my family why I was so sorry that I was tired and just trapped and I didn't know any other way and my tears started dripping down on the letters it felt like God <laughs> came there in that room with me and just hugged me. Kind of spoke, not audibly to me, but he said, if you just take one step towards me, then I will do the rest. And he said, call your church. And what I didn't know is my church family had been praying for me for years. An opportunity opened up and there was a bed at a Christian rehab, and I was there for 13 months. I feel like Jesus 
started to show me who I was in his eyes. I was going to church and I was in college and career and I met my husband who saw me as a new creation. He was in the military, he was a young Marine going through flight school. I let my guard down and during that time I kind of fell back into drinking a little bit socially, but it was different this time. Like the Lord would not allow me to be comfortable in it. Like I was immediately convicted. The Lord said, I brought you out of this and you're not going back. The one thing that I feel helped me the most is really studying those scriptures about your identity in Christ. It's not in popularity. It's not in your clothes. It's not in your job. It's not in even who you think you are. It's who God says you are. I feel like my life is a testimony to that. I don't feel like I have to be something else for other people anymore. I can just be comfortable being who God created me to be. Nothing else in this world satisfies like Jesus. Yeah, nothing else in this world will satisfy you like Jesus does. And if you're watching this and you just heard what I said and you're like, okay, I've heard that so many times and I don't believe it. I'm here to encourage you, if that's you. God loves you. And I'm sure you've heard that before as well. But you just saw in Paige's amazing story what he can do in the lives of people who just say yes to him. And so many times we try to overcomplicate that. We think that we have to be absolutely perfect, sinless, spotless before we come to Jesus. And that's just not the case. God is not asking you to be perfect. He's also not angry with you. Why? Because he sent his son Jesus to take care of all of that. For God so loved the world. Put your name right there. For God so loved Paige. For God so loves you and me and every person, every human being on this earth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him, whoever, doesn't matter what you've done, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's nothing we do. It's not our perfection. We could never bring anything, we could never bring a sacrifice so great that would forgive us of our sins. It's only by what Jesus did. It's only by the cross, only by his broken body and the bloodshed that we are made right with the Lord. When God looks at you, he sees his son, Jesus, and he says, wow, I love her. I love him. I'm so happy that they're coming home because I want to give them a hope and a future because that's what I have for them. If you put your hope and your faith in Jesus Christ alone, your name is written in the book of life. You will begin to experience peace and joy and healing and wholeness and redemption here on earth. But then when you take your last breath, you're going to be in eternity with your savior. You're going to be with your creator, with your father, your Abba, which means father in Hebrew. I just wanna encourage you today, put your hope and faith in Jesus. Paige said that it was really understanding her identity in Christ that made her transform. And I just encourage you, if you put your hope and faith in Jesus, you are a new creation in Christ. The old things have passed away and the new is here. You are a new person. You are a beloved son or daughter of the most high God. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. You are beloved. So if you wanna put your hope and your faith in Jesus like never before, 
Call us today. It's really simple. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. We've got some amazing prayer warriors on the other side of that phone call who are willing and able to come alongside of you, to lift up your needs to the Father, to encourage you in your faith. And we also want to offer you a free resource sheet that's called Your Identity in Christ. And you can download it, download your free copy at cbn.com. Or again, when you call us to pray a prayer of surrendering your life to, to Christ, we'll also give you those free resources that are going to help you on this new faith journey. I just believe that when you do that, the very best is yet to come for you, friend. Andrew. Lori Hubbard needed emergency surgery. Pressure was mounting on her brain, and doctors were going to remove part of her skull. As they were getting ready for the operation, her mother knew it was time for action. My head was just killing me. What is going on? Because I never experienced it to that magnitude. Like, what is it? I just never thought it was anything that serious. The headaches would come and go for Loria Hubbard. At first, she thought it was allergies or stress causing them and took aspirin, trying her best to carry on with her daily routine. But as the weeks passed by, the headaches came more often and were more severe. When I got to work one Monday, just still kept having horrible, horrible headaches. And I was like, I can't even do my job. I'm gonna have to go to the ER because I just can't take it anymore. At the ER, doctors told Loria the headaches were benign and sent her on her way. Loria then went to her parents' house and laid in bed. When she didn't get up, her mother Terry came to check on her. When I came in, I knew she had the headache, but um, it still did not register in my mind that this was serious. She kept telling me it was okay, but she never opened her eyes. A few hours later, Loria was still in bed unable to get up on her own after trying several times. Terry then called 911. Paramedics arrived and took Loria back to the hospital, where this time, doctors performed a CT scan. That's when Terry was brought in. The doctor who was on call came in, and he pulled up a chair and sat right in front of me. He said, Mom, it looks like a brain bleed. And when he said that, literally, the wind just went out of me because in all of my understanding, I know that's not good. He said, okay, he said, let me do what I gotta do. We're gonna take, we're gonna, we're right on top of this. Loria needed immediate surgery to drain the blood, relieve the pressure, and stop the bleeding. Otherwise, she would die. The nearest facility equipped for such a surgery was the Ohio State University Medical Center an hour away. So I sat there on the gurney for probably about a minute and I was just crying. And I heard the Lord say to me, I have trained you for this. Get up and go do what you know to do. As the medical staff prepared Loria to be transported, Terry started calling friends and family, asking for prayer. I began right then and there rebuking death. We began to plead the blood of Jesus over her life. To see her in that uh, situation, I truly had to trust God with my baby. Praying as she drove to the medical center, Terry says she received another word from God. The Lord told me, the Holy Spirit spoke to me when he said, the bleeding has stopped. Once I heard him say, the bleeding has stopped, the enemy couldn't torment, because that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to torment me, make me think by the time you get there, she'll be gone. When he said, the bleeding has stopped, then I kind of breathed again. I felt the peace of God. At the OSU Medical Center, neurosurgeon Dr. Shahid Nimji began to prep Loria for emergency brain surgery. It mandated open surgery, which means that we make a fairly large incision so we can take off the entire skull on that side of the brain. We remove all the blood that's there, and then in her case, we put the bone back on and sewed her back up again. After draining the blood, putting pressure on Loria's brain, Dr. Nimji found the bleeding had indeed stopped. In fact, after an extensive search to find the source of the bleeding, he couldn't find one. Dr. Nimji said the blood had stopped. And when he said that, immediately my, my mind went back to when the Lord told me the bleeding had stopped. I was literally amazed. We were just all rejoicing when we heard the bleeding had stopped. 
she's going to be fine. Loria was released from the hospital after only a few days and was soon back to feeling like her old self. Just something so tiny, like a headache. I could have been gone. I was grateful just to be alive. Most people, they have so many different things wrong with them when they go through a craniotomy. And I really feel like I'm like a version of me before the surgery. God is just amazing. Both Loria and Terry credit the work of Dr. Nimji's team and the power of prayer for her miraculous survival and recovery. Just thinking about the awesomeness of God and how much he just loves us and it just overwhelms me. It just overwhelms me to be able to see my daughter still here, just to see her again normal. Just like she said, there is no, she has no visible scars of that incident. No deficiency. I know the power of prayer. I have seen it firsthand. When I look at those pictures of me, my poor little brain, it makes me just think, God is just crazy. He can take you, he can take you through that. Like, and you look at me and you'd never know. I'm grateful every single day. I'm grateful for the medical team. What they were able to do was wonderful. I now know I have nothing to fear. I have nothing to worry about because if God brought me through that, God can bring you through anything. I believe in prayer, the power of prayer. That's probably the biggest thing that I would say, you know, from my story, take that away. Remarkable testimony. You know, Ashley and I were talking in the beginning of this program about hearing from God and, and our spirit hearing from the Lord. And, and here, Loria's mother heard the Lord say, get up and do what you know to do. Now, many of us know to pray, and you may be in a season of distress where you could be exhausted from praying. Allow Ashley and I to lead you in prayer. We'd love you to join with us. Before we pray for you and pray for the miraculous, we'd like to read you some encouraging reports. This is a brief one, but it's powerful. This is Laura from YouTube who said, God saved my life after I was dead for nine minutes because of an overdose, praise God. All right, well, here's a little bit longer one, but this one's from April from YouTube. She shares, one day I was driving fast, showing off for my friends, and I lost control of the car and was heading straight for a big light pole. Everyone in the car started screaming and ducking. When we got to the pole, the car just corrected itself and turned so we wouldn't hit it. We couldn't believe it. God saved us because we would have been seriously injured. I'll never forget this. Thank you, Jesus, for every Everything you have done for me. Thank you, Lord. That's Amen. amazing. We love hearing from you. Thank you for sending us your reports. Yeah. Ashley and I are going to pray for you now. Yeah. Father God, we are together in the name of Jesus. We thank you for those viewing this program on television or their phones, however they're watching, Lord God, and they're praying, they're seeking a touch from you. And Lord God, we ask your Holy Spirit to move now for the glory of God in yeah. Jesus' name. Someone been suffering from terrible acid reflux and medication uh, has not been working. You're so distressed and it will not go away. I just, I ask you to lift your hands now. The Lord is healing you of that condition mm. immediately in the name of Jesus. That pain is going away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I just I just believe lots of people are, are watching and you just heard Andrew say something about being overwhelmed because you pray so much. And I just believe God is touching you right now. Those who are feeling heavy burdened because of loved ones that are suffering and you've just been interceding and interceding and you're just wondering, when is God gonna move? I believe God is giving you a fresh wind, a fresh fire. Just let the, the breath of God just flow through you right now to, to encourage you, to give you more strength to endure, more hope and more faith for what you have been praying for. And let me just remind you that it's not your faith, it's your faith in Jesus. It's having faith in Him alone. It's not anything you do. It's you believing that Jesus can and will do what He says He will by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. That person that you've been praying for is healed. Just receive this right now from the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Someone watching, I don't know if it's high school or college age, you're, you've determined to live life with purity and holiness before the Lord. And, and it's not popular with your peers, not popular with your friends, you're losing them. And 
literally just sorrowful because of how your life seems wrecked and you're trying to live for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's just saying to you now that your intimacy level with him and the revelation you will receive will far outweigh any benefits of sin, mm -hmm. that it's just so temporary. And he's got a long-term plan for you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. We leave you these words from 1 Peter, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Ashley, you said that one earlier. I did. See Praise you tomorrow. God. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time, and God bless.